tonight on Nate Newswatch. The debate on the tuition freeze heats up. Um, obviously, there's a lot more work to be done, but we're excited that um, this is a giant first step. A canoe and kayak club is devastated. And without that boat, it will be losing a part that I need to regain in practice. And it's the end of the line for Greyhound. Yeah, a lot of people are aware of what's going on. You know, you have no idea how many of these people have ridden with me before, you know. Newswatch starts now. Good evening. The Minister of Advanced Education, Marlon Smith, has introduced a new bill to ensure post-secondary edu education becomes more affordable for students. If Bill 19 passes, this could mean a whole new dynamic for post-secondary students and their finances. Our Sarah Mitchell joins us live from the South Lobby with more on that story. Thanks guys. To quote Mr. Schmidt, Bill 19 is a bill by the students for the students. If passed, effective as of February 19th, 2019, this bill will cap tuitions on all post-secondary educations across Alberta. For the fifth year in a row, Alberta students will have predictable and more affordable tuition. This bill will enable our government to deliver on the highly anticipated Alberta tuition framework. Bill 19 is to make post-secondary education an option for those who never thought it would be. Student advisors say students are struggling more and more to make enough to cover tuition payments or to get enough from student loans. The Minister of Advanced Education understands the financial struggle that comes with getting an education. He reminisces with the media about his time as a student. Oh my goodness, uh, so I ate uh, tuna right out of the can. <laughs> Students who are present to watch the bill be tabled say they believe the government is taking a big step in the right direction. So as a student, this bill is really important. Um, students across the province have long asked for affordable, predictable and accessible tuition in Alberta. Um, obviously there's a lot more work to be done, but we're excited that um, this is a giant first step and we're excited to see it. Though many people are very excited about this new bill, not everybody believes it's in the best interest of the students. Well, I was always sort of skeptical of the tuition freeze right from the beginning, right even before the current government. The, the freeze was originally implemented by the old progressive conservative government. And my concern always was, okay, well, what happens when the freeze ends? Is there going to be, a, you know, a large increase to catch up uh, for all those years that tuition wasn't allowed to go up? Thankfully, that's not what's going to happen, um, at least under the current government. If the government changes next year, then everything can change. For the first time in Alberta's history, the minister is able to regulate tuition and mandatory non-instructional fees to ensure fairness and predictability for students. This bill also ensures that students have a greater voice in decisions that, affect, that impact their education. There will also be at least two student representatives on the boards of each public post-secondary education starting February 1st, 2019. Now Sarah, how are the students able to have their voices heard so loudly that it helped pass this bill? Well, all the changes that have been made are a result of student, faculty, and staff survey that was put out earlier this year and that received more than 4,000 participants. Some changes that have been asked were to have colleges across the province transition into universities. Now that the bill will, is being considered being passed, Red Deer College, Grand Prairie Regional College are a couple of the schools that will be recognized as universities. And Sarah, how will the freeze affect post-secondary institutions? Well, for many schools, this potentially could mean budget cuts or possible staff reduction. 40% of tuition goes towards materials necessary for programs as well as teacher salaries. Nate's own advocacy director, Jason Roth, says he's skeptical about the extended freeze simply because it'll eventually have a negative impact on all of us. Thanks, Sarah. That's our Sarah Mitchell reporting live from the South Lobby. You're watching Nate News Watch, the next generation of news. Greyhound buses made their final trips through Western Canada this week. With its closure, many companies have been preparing to fill the gap. Our Michael Pander has more on this story. Thanks, guys. The doors are now locked, and the close sign is permanent on bus terminals across the West. The familiar Greyhound logo will no longer be seen on the long haul. But for those who rely on riding the coach, well, they won't be left on the side of the road. For many people, buses like these are the preferred transport between cities, as well as an important source of transportation for smaller communities. With the closure of Greyhound, 
Driver Kerry Kuroi has a few words to say. I just hope everybody who rode with us had you know, more good rides than bad rides. Sometimes the rides aren't good when the weather's not good. So hopefully overall, if they kept coming back, they were, in, they were okay with the service. Even with Greyhound shutting down, transit must continue. Greyhound served more than 100 Alberta communities, big and small. And because of this, many companies have been stepping up to take over the routes that were once occupied by the Greyhound buses. The closure of Greyhound opened up room for many companies to expand their service, such as Northern Express, Cold Shot, and Red Arrow, filling the routes across Alberta that were once serviced by the Greyhound buses. You know, I mean, if anything, the, the service may be better for the for the consumer in the sense that there was, you know, one one carrier was doing it three months ago, and that was Greyhound. And now you're going to have uh, three choices. Already, 82% of Greyhound's bus routes are being covered by private companies. The Alberta and federal governments have invested $2 million into bus services for small and rural communities. This is all part of an incentive for future bus expansion. From the Greyhound Main Depot, I'm Michael Pander. Thanks, Michael. A shooting at a synagogue in Pittsburgh that left 11 dead has had its impact felt all over the world, including here in Edmonton. Flags are at half mast at the Beth Israel Synagogue, and inside, 11 candles are burning on to honor the victims of the shooting. Synagogue office manager Luba Allen hopes that one day the hate will stop. It's happened before and this is not going to be the end because anti-Semitism is always there. And we just pray that um, it diminishes and uh, that we continue and uh, people will stop hating. People will stop hating. We just wish that that would happen. The candles will burn until Monday night to end the traditional seven days of mourning. November is Family Violence Prevention Month, and on Thursday, the City of Edmonton held a panel to discuss ways of preventing violence among families. Do hereby proclaim November 2018 Family Violence Prevention Month in Edmonton, Alberta's capital city. The panel this year focused on work that supports survivors. While domestic abuse affects all people, experts believe the focus needs to be on women, as they are more, much more likely to be victims. Between 83 and 87 percent of people charged in the City of Edmonton are male. Uh, this is a fact. Yes, there are women who abuse men, but that number is far, far lower. Family violence in Canada accounted for 25% of crimes reported to the police. 32% of adults say they were mistreated as a child, and 53% of older adults are abused by family. If you or someone you know is a victim of family violence and wants to know about uh, available resources, please visit alberta.ca look, and look under the social supports tab. A local canoe and kayak club is devastated after a large theft, leaving them dead in the water. St. Albert Canoe and Kayak Club had all of its boats and its transport trailers stolen last week from a space they have been storing them for years. The boats cost a total of $50,000 and are designed for competitive use. It will be hard to sell them because, you know, they're not recreational boats, you know. Usually people, when they go, they want to buy a kayak, they go for canoe or kayak recreational boat, boat. But these are competition boats. You need to have a lot of experience as an athlete to train on these boats. It, yeah, like, it's, it's really hard to sell them. The club asks that people keep an eye out for the trailer and any of the boats for sale online and to contact the RCMP if they see them. The theft has hampered several of the club's athletes' ability to compete in events and they are worried about whether or not they are able to compete come next season. The city is asking residents in the Alberta Avenue neighborhood for some fees back as they look to renovate the community. Less crime, space for both vehicles and bikes, as well as dog parks and paths to walk on. That was some of the feedback the city heard during the first public engagement. They took that feedback and redesigned a new concept, but residents still have concerns with construction looming. What they're calling curb extensions. They've done them all up 122nd Avenue, and what it's done is it's supposed to slow down the traffic, but it's congesting, making it more dangerous. Residents still have one more meeting to voice their concerns with the neighborhood design. With the neighborhood design, that meeting is scheduled for February of 2019, with construction to start later in the year. 
and just around south, just a little bit south rather, around McEwen University, the city of Edmonton is trying to make a better pedestrian experience by reworking the streets. Part of the plan includes a renovated 105 Ave, and the city is trying to build new sidewalks where none previously existed, as well as permanent protected bike lanes and interim parking. City of Edmonton Supervisor Jack Nipsu believes that this is a much needed change. Well, if you've ever walked down, you, you know it's a pretty poor pedestrian experience as it is today. As I mentioned, there's no sidewalks today, uh, large stretches of it. Um, it's a road that needs some, some love and some attention, um, and so it's, it's due for some renewal. Other changes are scattered between 109 Street and 116 Street, which includes newly created open spaces, new benches, fixes to the drainage systems, and more permanent and interim parking. The city hopes to finish the project by 2023. As the world continues to look for an alternative source of energy, a new system developed by Nate grads could have a profound impact on the construction industry. This solar sea can comes filled with solar panels that can be set up in a variety of fashions, bringing low-cost green energy to construction sites and remote areas. The sea can was designed by two Nate grads, Chila Harsasi and Aaron McGregor. For Harsasi, the sea can fills an important hole in the industry remote construction sites and oil field applications. These are the two areas we identified being left out of the renewable energy industry for now. Just, uh, just because there was no large enough capacity what they could have taken in a mobile unit. The unit also has a backup generator that can transmit data about power and output remotely. The batteries in the can will be able to power two entirely separate houses. Some of Alberta's most creative and innovative minds gathered at Nate's new PIC building for the 29th annual Aztec Awards. The Aztec Awards honor the next generation of innovators in agriculture, energy, health, science and technology. One of the award winners from the evening's event was Brian Tischler, who won the award for Outstanding Achievement in Agricultural Innovation. Tischler is directly responsible for technology being used in self-driven farm equipment. Well, if you've heard of self-driving cars, then the stuff I'm working on is self-driving tractors and farm equipment and that sort of thing. Being able to not be in the vehicle and have it be smart enough to drive itself. The Aztec Awards celebrate all kinds of different innovation in science and technology from people throughout Alberta. Nate has a 360 simulation theater that is state-of-the-art and one of the largest in Canada. Uh, it's just in here. Nate Simulation Center is home of the new 360 Simulation Theater that is meant for more 4D simulations. With multiple cameras, projectors, and mics, the 360 Simulator is designed to be lifelike. We're more of a 4D uh, scenario system where we're trying to induce distractions and, and making it as realistic to the real world event as possible. The Simulation Center does rent out the 360 Simulation Theatre to other programs here at Nate, but it's not yet available to the public. And how volunteers collected food donations for students in need that filled 22 foot U hauls. We have non perishable food for our food center. It has been helping a lot of students, more than 500 students and their families. Coming up in sports, both the men's and women's Ook soccer teams are heading to nationals. I have your highlights for men's volleyball and hockey. Plus, I see what's next for the Eskimos. All that and more coming up after the break. As we move into the first weekend of November, We'll have a look at your forecast as the temperatures may be shifting. We'll have the weather after this. So, the UK has just instituted the toughest ban on ivory trade Europe has ever seen. It's 1.59. Underwear required over 40 stitches to her face. Good afternoon, it's 2 o'clock. I'm Jenna Winterburn with your NR92 News Update.
Well, it's funny, Peter, you know what? The end of October is pretty nice, and then we wake up today in November, and it's just, it's awful. It's snow everywhere. I know. I actually thought it was going to come on Halloween, as it usually is, but now we just got sugar, ice, and everything not nice. Tyler, you got the weather? Yes, thanks guys. As we're moving into the first weekend of the month, we're looking at starting it off by daylight saving time ending. Don't forget to roll those clocks back one hour this weekend. Moving over to the weather in Calgary, Saturday's looking mainly sunny with a high of 10, increasing cloud coverage overnight with a low of zero. 60% chance of rain and snow looking to hit over there. Over to Jasper, Saturday's looking mostly cloudy with a high of plus seven and clouds continue to cover overnight with a low of one. 70% chance of that rain snow mix moving across the province there. Over to Fort McMurray now. Saturday's looking a bit cloudier, high of one, and a nighttime low dropping to minus five. Pretty chilly, and a higher percent chance of precipitation there, 70, with that snow mix. Over to Edmonton, our home, where we got some snow this morning and it looked a little ugly, is looking to look up this weekend, with a high of plus four and a nighttime low of zero. 30% chance of that rain snow mix here, looking to maybe end by the end of the weekend. The Edmonton average highs and lows, a high of four, which is what we're sitting around right now, and an average low of minus four, which we can expect within a few days. Edmonton record high and low, set back in 1949, was plus 20, where we all wish we were sitting at right now. But we can be grateful we're not in 1919, where the record low was set at minus 23, which is really cold. However, this overall weather in November is looking like November. Back to you guys. News Watch Weather is brought to you by NR92, the station for the students. Some Nate students went trick-or-treating to try and scare away hunger. Our Connor Toffin has more on that story. Thank you so, Thank you so much. You're welcome. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. While most people go trick-or-treating for Reese's and M&M's, some Nate volunteers weren't looking for candy, but rather canned beans and other non-perishable food items. With food going to the Nates of Food Centre, volunteers like Shay Jana felt great about helping people get food that may not be able to afford it. Because I'm an international student and I come all the way from Morocco, so just seeing the difference in how people like live here and how people are living in my country. I see that like when you help people, you help yourself first. Less fortunate students can apply to get two food hampers a month and each hamper can last about three to five days. Volunteer coordinator Alexa Prins hopes that the food gathered can last the Nates of Food Centre until Christmas. We see a really big need for the food every year and there's always students that students and their families that could use food items so that's, that's a big motivation to just collect more and give them more options. In the event's fifth straight year, some volunteers felt pretty fulfilled with the generosity of the people that donated. Yeah, there's like one lady give us like a bunch of apples. Oh, it yeah. was a whole bag of apples, apples and like, then there oh was one, one guy, he just gave us like a box of crap dinner, which is, I'm Nates. so jealous, like I want it. After Nate's trick-or-treat event this year, they have filled the basement with bags of food. Last year, they set a 2,000 pound food mark, but this year, I think they might have a beat. Connor Toffin for Nate Newswatch. Thanks for that, Connor. It's pretty exciting to see the men's soccer team. They're doing really well this year. They're killing it. Yeah, I know they had uh, their provincial playoffs this weekend. Not sure if they won. Abby, what can you tell us? Thanks, guys. The Ooks men's soccer team is headed to Nationals next week after they took home gold at provincials last week. The Ooks shut out Concordia Thunder last weekend 6-0 in Calgary, giving them gold medals and a trip to the CCAA Nationals next week in PEI. The team spent this week practicing to get ready for the big tournament. The right mindset to go into this. Uh, we haven't let them you know, stray away from it. Like they're, they're pretty focused. They've been in a focus group since the start of the season. So uh, they set goals for themselves. They set goals as a team. And we're slowly but surely accomplishing them. The tournament starts next Wednesday and ends Saturday. The women's team is also heading to Nationals in Coquitlam, BC next Wednesday as well. The Ooks men's volleyball team dominated Friday night against the Grand Prairie Regional College Wolves. 
The first set of the game was a back and forth between the Ooks and the Wolves. Trailing by five, the Wolves stepped up and managed to score four in a row before a short serve by Wolves power hitter Carter Nad Kronechny gave the Ooks a point and the ball back, making the score 16-14. The rest of the set went back and forth between each team, but it was the Ooks that finished strong, winning the first set 25-20. The second set was dominated by the Ooks as the Wolves only managed to get seven points on the board, ending the set quickly at 25 to seven for the Ooks. The Ooks only needed to win one more set to win the game. The Ooks came back from the last set and kept the Ooks on their toes as it went back and forth until the end. It was a hit from Wolves' James Haythorn hitting the ball into the net that gave the Ooks the point they needed to win the third and final set, sweeping the Grand Prairie Wolves three nothing. The Ooks men's hockey team took to the ice to face off the Concordia Thunder on Saturday. The game started out slow by both teams playing good defense. However, it was the Ooks who scored first from Thomas Foster with assists from Jake McKidiak and Curtis Roach making the score 1-0 in the first period. The Thunder had a chance to score but fell short by a save by Ooks goalie Brennan Jensen. Halfway into the second, Thomas Foster would show nice hand-eye deflecting the point shot past goalie Garrett Storms for a second of the game putting the Ooks up 2-0. 3-0 in the third, the Thunder would finally put the puck past Jensen getting back within two. The Ooks would add one late in the third, winning the game 4-1. The Edmonton Eskimos had their last week of practice of the season to prepare for their last game against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Okay. If he bubbles out, then you can the Eskimos practiced for the last time this week after being bumped out of the playoffs. Their last game of the season is Saturday against Winnipeg and head coach Jason Moss says that they're going to go out and play with the same amount of pride they've been playing with all season. Putting it all on the line every single day that we've been out here. We've been out here for three days straight now. I mean, I love the attitude, I love the, um, the energy, and again, it looks like we're having a lot of fun, and you wouldn't be able to tell by the way our practices are that we're not playing for anything but pride and to finish the year strong. Earlier this week, the Eskimos released their recipients for this year's CFL Awards. This year, the recipients are Mike Riley for Most Outstanding Player, J.C. Sherritt for Most Outstanding Defensive Player, Kwaku Boateng for Most Outstanding Canadian, Matt O'Donnell for Most Outstanding Offensive Lineman, Sean White for Most Outstanding Special Teams Player, and Monshadrick Hunter for Most Outstanding Rookie. This year's CFL Awards will be held on Thursday, November 22nd at the Edmonton Winspear Center. High school football is coming to a close and all eyes will be on the Car Division City Finals next week. However, the Miles Division City Finals finished this week. Find the hip, Dre. Find the hip. Yeah, yeah, good. The Archbishop Jordan Scots are taking on the St. Albert Skyhawks in this year's Miles Conference City Finals, which took place Thursday. Leading up to the big game, the Scots practice every day to get ready for this matchup. The Skyhawks were the only team that beat the Scots this year in a devastating 44 to nothing loss. This season was a huge comeback from last for the Scots as they didn't win a single regular season game. Been waiting all year for this opportunity to get back on the field against them. So we're very, we're very motivated and we're very ready for them. We know them well. And so we're just going to be who we are. That's been our mantra all year is we're just going to be us. And that's how we're going to come into this game. The city finals took place Thursday at Commonwealth. And as, as of Thursday, the Scots are the Miles Conference champions, beating the Skyhawks 27 to 12. Now it's time for your sports roundup in 45 seconds. Time for your sports in 45. For the first time in MMA history, a trade between two organizations went down with the UFC, trading former flyweight champ Demetrius Johnson to 1FC in exchange for undefeated welterweight Ben Askren. Humble Broncos forward Tyler Smith is returning to the ice for the first time Friday since the bus crash that took the lives of 16 of his teammates last year. Last night ended the Battle of the Bays between the Oakland Raiders and the San Francisco 49ers 34-3 for the 49ers as they aren't scheduled to play against each other again until 2022 when the Raiders will be in Las Vegas. The NBA is discussing whether or not to find Cleveland Cavaliers guard J.R. Smith after he publicly announced that he wanted to be traded due to not having enough playing time. That's been your sports in 45.
Well, Abby, it's really awesome to see the Menzooks hockey team, you know, picking up a couple wins back to back. It's good to see that they had a slow start to the year. Yeah, they started the season off 0-2. What can you tell us a little bit about that? So as of now, after beating Concordia twice, they are now on a wi two-win streak. Uh, they will not be playing again till November 9th. And it will be their first game on Friday will be at home against State. And then Saturday, they'll be in Calgary against State again. Awesome. Thanks, Abby. Coming up after the break, it's mustache season as we get the lowdown at the start of November. And how this month-long movement aims to raise awareness for men's mental health. And people grow their mustaches out throughout the month for an awareness for uh, prostate cancer, testicular cancer, um, men's mental health, and like preventing suicide. Coming up in entertainment, we take a look at Die Nasty. We get a preview of Lest You Forget, a musical tribute, and we visit Edmonton's first haunted show home. All that and more coming up after the break. Hot! What the? Don't miss out on Ook's Hockey! Catch Ook's play-by-play -play for home games Friday and Saturday nights. Light the lamp with NR92.com, the station for the students. Newswatch jackets provided by Elite Promotional Marketing and Timberland Supply. November is a month with a lot of significance for many people. And once again, men have began growing mustaches in an effort to support one another. November started off as a way to spread awareness about prostate cancer, but has since grown into an event focusing on other men's health issues, such as mental health. Many participants begin their journey wanting to grow a cool moustache, but grows people along the way. But while I was doing that, for like just for like growing a beard, I actually like researched and found out what it's actually about and saw the statistics. It's kind of scary. Like we need to be talking more about it. November runs in more than 20 countries worldwide, with well over 5 million people joining the cause. If you want to get involved, visit ca.movember.com. With Halloween behind us, I wonder what we're going to have this weekend in entertainment. It's kind of a slow week. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Edmonton's pretty fun. Jasmine, what do you got for entertainment? Yeah, guys, with Halloween gone, this weekend ahead of Remembrance Day, the Cosmopolitan Music Society holds a musical tribute to the military, and rehearsals are currently underway. The Less We Forget, a musical tribute, features over 100 instrumentalists, ranging from volunteers to current serving members of the military. But this tribute means more than just, peop more than just music to the people who have served. It's breathtaking. It uh, stops your heart for a second to watch these old vets and their attention, and they're saluting to, their, to uh, the song that they've lived uh, and endured uh, their time in service with. Lest We Forget, a musical tribute takes place on Sunday at the Winsbury Centre, a week before Remembrance Day. Die Nasty is an improv soap opera show, and they are now two weeks into their 28th year of running. This year's theme is Lord of Thrones. With the Game of Thrones theme being so popular among the cast at the Sopathon, they decided to merge it with the Lord of the Rings for this year's show. Die Nasty is a hit each and every year, captivating new and returning fans. I think they enjoy watching the show because they get attached to characters. They have favorite actors. They have favorite uh, storylines. They want to see what's going to happen. So literally, someone will come to the show and thinking, oh, I'll try this out, and then they're hooked, and they come for the whole year. Even if you weren't at the previous shows, it's not hard to get attached to the storyline. This season of Die Nasty runs every Monday at the Varscona Theatre and continues until late May. On the spookiest night of the year, a show home brought out its inner demon. Would you like a hand? Sterling Homes hosted the first ever haunted show home on Halloween. They displayed not only the house clean enough to eat out of a toilet, but its horrors as well hoping to give a frightening twist to a regular show home. Working in the show home, you don't usually get a lot of trick-or-treaters, so I thought I wanted to change that and change up the game a bit and show people that were a little bit more creative than the others. They also collected donations for Santa's Anonymous and the Edmonton Food Bank. With the success this creepy house had this year, they're hoping to make it an annual event. Instant Family is a movie about a couple who decide to start a family with the help of foster care. 
People who take in foster kids are really special. The kind of people who volunteer when it's not even a holiday. We don't even volunteer on a holiday. Pete and Ellie want to adopt 15-year-old Lizzie, but they find out that she comes with her two younger siblings. Skeptical at first, they choose to take them all in, and they have to learn what being a parent is really all about. Do you like the Clippers? Oh, I'm more of a Lakers fan. Oh, no! You hit me because I like the Clippers! I think the Clippers are awesome. They were smart for trading Blake Griffin, their best player. <laughs> Instant Family comes out November 16th, and Nate Newswatch wants to help you see this movie. Tweet us at Nate Newswatch what was the name of the song that Mark Wahlberg's music group had number one on the Billboard charts before he started his acting career. And that's been your look at entertainment. Back to you guys. And that's all for Nate Newswatch. Thanks, Jasmine. Uh, thank you all for watching tonight. Take care.